Good morning, caregivers. I'm Carol Howell with Let's Talk Dementia Live on Facebook. Glad you've chosen to join me today. Are you up and at them and got your coffee and your day going? I hope so. Today is June 13th and I can't believe it's Thursday already. Where has the week flown to? I don't know because it's certainly flown by, has it not? I would like to thank our sponsors, HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, 803-985-0985. Call them to make an appointment for the service or repair of your Honda, Hyundai, Acura, Kia, and Toyota. <laughs> One day those words are going to flow off my tongue, maybe. Amazing mechanics. You'll be glad you took the time to call them. And also, Life in the Carolinas, the award-winning, Telly award-winning, Emmy-nominated television show, with the episode called Remembering No More that features my sweet mama. And you can find that at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com as well as on YouTube. You know what? I noticed in yesterday's show that I have a reflection on my glasses, don't I? Is that better? Probably not. Oh, well, I'm not quite sure how to fix that. Lights, camera, action. I need somebody that knows how to do all that. I want to take a minute to thank the wonderful people at the support group, the caregiver support group at First Baptist Church in Rock Hill. Um, we were asked to speak there many moons ago. We've been, as of last night, five times, four as the speaker. And last night, we went to thank them for all that they have done for us as we are preparing to move to Southwest Florida. Not gonna change anything in the world as far as the work we do. We're just gonna be sitting in a different chair in a different state doing it, so nothing's gonna change. Um, except I won't be seeing these folks and the blessing they have been in my life. Um, on the way to my mama's funeral, this past Saturday, I said to my husband, my first Baptist friends will be there today. He said, you think so? I went, oh, they'll be there. And they were. And it just made my heart so happy. And thank you for the love and affection that Michael and I received last night and being prayed over. Yeah, that's that's pretty potent stuff, let me tell you. And I told them when I first got there, I hated to cry, not just for nobody to do anything to make me cry. And what they have to do, pray over us and make us cry. <sighs> it's just the way that goes. But anyway, I'm glad that um, we have those friends. If you're looking for a good Baptist church, go to First Baptist Church in Rock Hill. I like it. Well, one of my, my viewers, um, Beth Crosby, sent me a little text asking me had I read this article about the dangers of diet soda. And I had. It had been some time. But thank you for sending that, Beth, because it told me what I was going to talk about today. You know, some mornings I wake up going, what are we talking about today? I love planning ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, researchers studied 3,000 adults who consumed diet sodas to determine their risk for stroke and or dementia. All right. Is there a link between diet sodas, dementia, stroke, or dementia brought on because of a stroke? Individuals 45 years old or older no, individuals up to 45 years old, that was it, I said it wrong. Individuals up to 45 years old um, had triple the risk of developing a stroke by consuming diet soda. Did you hear that? Triple the risk. I'm telling you, artificial anything is not good for you. It is not. Artificial sweetener is a killer. Why is it a killer? How many people have you ever heard of who died from a stroke? You don't want that. The second leading cause of dementia in our world is vascular dementia. Depending on the study, some studies say it's the third leading. Whichever, I won't quabble or quibble, what's the word? <laughs> Argue with them about that. I know I don't wanna have a stroke. And I don't want to have dementia brought on by a stroke. I can reduce my chances of that greatly by no artificial sweeteners. Those 60 years and older had tripled the risk rate for stroke and dementia. Well, don't drink that stuff. Don't eat artificial sweeteners. Don't buy those light, light foods, you know, that have the artificial sweeteners in them. Don't do it. The sweetener that I use is Stevia, and it's in the liquid form, which is as pure as you're going to get it. If you buy Stevia at your grocery store in those little packages, 
It's not natural. You don't want it. Be careful. Go to Vitamin Depot, vitamindepot.com. Order Sweet Leaf. You used to could find Sweet Leaf at Harris, not Harris Teeter at Publix and stores like that. I just dropped all my notes in the floor. Wait a minute. I got it. That Anyway, that's the sweetener you want to use. All right. These statistics did remain true in their study of 3,000 people for pe for um, adjusting for factors in their life like overeating, what kind of diet the individual consumed, the level of exercising and smoking. They adjusted for all of that. In addition, studies show that drinking diet soda does not increase weight loss. Now, wouldn't you think it would? If I'm normally consuming all that sugar from 46 Mountain Dews, <laughs> and now I'm drinking Diet Mountain Dew, it would help with weight loss. Studies show it does not. In fact, it decreases weight loss as the body is still left with the same desire to overeat. So it's doing nothing to satiate your appetite. So again, why are we drinking it? Diet sodas lead to a 30% higher risk of depression. Don't need that. 30% higher risk of kidney disease. Well, that makes sense, y'all. Your kidneys have got to process all that dang artificial sweetener you put in there. But get this. Diet soda, where you're not getting sugar. Get this now. 67% higher risk for type 2 diabetes. Holy moly. Do you know what diabetes can bring about? Dementia. Throw those diet sodas away. No joke, if you're gonna drink soda, you're better off drinking the sugar regular soda. There is not a connection with stroke or dementia with regular soda, even though excess sugar is a well-known contributor to heart disease and inflammation and anything that's bad for your heart is bad for your brain and that inflammation can lead direct there's a direct correlation between inflammation and alzheimer's so i didn't just tell you sugar sodas are good for you i said if we're gonna weigh them sugar sodas are actually better for you than diet sodas but neither one of them's good for you I mean, unless you just want Alzheimer's brought on by inflammation caused by all that sugar. I'm just thinking not. Mm -mm. Sugar drinks have been shown to actually shrink the brain, reducing the size of the hippocampus, and accelerate brain aging. Now, what is the hippocampus? It's one of those two big words I like to say. I like to say hippocampus and medulla oblongata. I just sounds so good. Hippocampus is in the dead center of your brain, and that is where Alzheimer's takes its very first bite. It says, I'm a little bit hungry. Let's go eat some hippocampus. And it eats there for a while till it just gets bored and wants to expand the menu, and it starts eating other parts of the brain until at the point of death, like with my mama, two-thirds of the brain tissue has left the body, and all that's left is a very small portion of the brain. Do you want that? No. None of us do. But are we willing to make the changes in our life to decrease those chances? Well, I can tell you right now I am. So my daughter was born in 1986. So in 1985, um, I got pregnant. The day I found out I was pregnant, my uh, doctor, who had a bit of a country sound to him, he goes, well, now, Carol, you're pregnant. You're going to have a baby. I don't want you to drink any more sodas and no more caffeine. <laughs> okay, maybe he didn't sound quite that bad, but that's how I remember it. And I thought, no caffeine and no sodas. Well, that's not going to be any fun. But see, it had taken forever to get pregnant. And I was so excited to be pregnant. I absolutely had no quabbles of not consuming these things. Did it for the health of my child right? You would do anything. If they told you, you can never, ever eat whatever again for the rest of your life, and if, if you do eat it, your child's going to be sick, well, you wouldn't eat it. I mean, duh. But I'm telling you that about yourself. Don't eat these things. I told you Michael's blood work results came back yesterday, and his sugar and all those creatinine, all those numbers were in the right range. Thank you, Lord. I'm still celebrating that. His cholesterol's a little bit off. He has cholesterol issues that they believe are hereditary, that no matter what he does or doesn't do, he's going to have high cholesterol. There's just so much you're going to do about some things in your body. 
but he can also help keep it lower than what heredity wants it to be, potentially, by what he doesn't eat. And he does a very good job of that. But are you watching that? If you have read my book, If My Body is a Temple, Why Am I Eating Donuts? Available on Amazon, Amazon bestseller. little commercial for Carol. It talks about the miracle that happened in my life that helped me lose 100 pounds. So what was that miracle? I became allergic to everything. I have the most boring pantry on the planet. There is nothing bad for you in there. It is very hard to eat bad for you stuff if you don't own it. Because you're probably not going to get up out of, off your sofa and drive to the Harris Teeter and buy what you want. Or to Publix, depending on where in the world you live. So think about what you keep in your house. Is it good for you? Keep that body happy. The scripture says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Lord? Well, I'm pretty sure you don't want that temple to be crudded up with some nasty artificial sweeteners. Just don't do it, y'all. Okay? Oh, that's my preaching for today. Somebody pass the offering plate by all means. All right, I would like to thank our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas, www.lifeinthecarolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story, and HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension, 803-985-0985. Tell them Carol sent you. So this weekend, what am I? Oh, today, um, in a little bit, my husband and, and my friend Charlotte and I are going to the farmhouse in Clover, where we will be holding our very first caregivers retreat, October 5th. So excited. If you would like to nominate a hardworking caregiver, email me their name, and I will communicate back and forth with you about it. And my email is carol at Let's Talk Dementia. Dot org, but just so you'll know, that care caregiver will be able, have to be able to make their own way to Clover, South Carolina. I can't afford to get nobody here. Oh, goodness, no. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. See you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Blessings and smiles. Bye-bye.